If you hear about reparations, get this very firmly fixed in your mind. You're not here for a parlor discussion. It's not something to talk about that's nice. If you don't get reparations, black folk, you're through in this country. Let me be that very specific for you. You see, what's happening to black Americans <clears throat> is that black Americans have been systematically, socially engineered into the lowest level of a real-life monopoly game. You do not own and control a sufficient amount of anything to be competitive in America. And you get, you've been marginalized now for 400 years. You're getting ready to be buried. You can get buried under at least a whole broad groups of ambiguous groupings. That's everything from culture groups, language groups, and gender groups. You're going down. You, it's no longer an issue. You better get reparations and get it fast. Now, to get reparations, one of the things I've been trying to do now for 30 years, uh, beginning with, with the state of Florida when Governor Rubin asked you to put me over education when they had no blacks, blacks in politics in Florida, was to write the first affirmative action plan in the United States, and that was written to be reparations for black folk in 1971. And George Bush just, Jr., I guess, uh, what's his name, Jed Bush just killed it off about six months ago. But, but what's happening now is that what I'm trying to do is to create a Harvest Institute that would try to take all my colleagues here and as much as possible try to give you new points of information to take you outside the box. Part of the problem we got in trying to deal with reparations, a lot of the other racial issues in the country, is that we keep trying to think and find solutions inside the box. There are no solutions inside the box for black folk. You got to get outside and try to find and get a long-term perspective and a long view on it. And that's what the Harvest Institute is in existence for, and that's what they're going to say in existence for. Now, the reason you cannot win, as I said, is that you've been locked into this low level of a real-life monopoly game. You do not own and control enough of wealth. See, in 1860, for instance, black folk, as a direct result of slavery, had an ownership. When you were 98% slaves, you had an ownership of one half of 1% of this nation's wealth in 1860 on the eve of the Civil War. Now, this is the richest country in the world, the most capitalistic country in the world. And here you are 140 years after slavery when you're supposedly 100% free and you still only have one half of 1% of this nation's wealth. You cannot compete. The typical average white person in America has 3,500 times more money than you have. And that's not true only of blacks in America. It's true of the world internationally. What's happening right now is blacks is a marginalized, subordinated class of people all over the earth. You have one half of 1% of the wealth in this nation. Your same thing is true all over the world. In the world, there's approximately 392 trillion dollars worth of wealth on the earth. And black folk on, around the world have less than 1% ownership of it.